Good morning all. Wall to wall sunshine. Yeah, we're having a bit of a heat wave and um, it's absolutely glorious. It's really warm and really sunny. And uh, that got me thinking, maybe I should spend a day in the garden with the Muppet. So uh, Muppet is my maximum power tracking solar charge controller project built out of sort of discrete components, uh, the inductor there, there's a MOSFET and a diode, capacitors, and then there's an Arduino which acts as the sort of control panel. And this unit is designed to have a solar panel on the input side and then a lead acid battery on the output side. And I was just thinking maybe I could bring this uh, more up to date and make it more versatile, make it more universal. So really the main essence of this project is this section here, it's the buck converter. The input goes through a MOSFET and then out through an inductor and there's a diode to ground. And it looks exactly like the Wikipedia buck converter. Uh, the supply comes through a switch, which is the MOSFET on here, uh, out through an inductor and there's a Schottky diode to ground. So one thing I could do with this circuit is instead of a diode here, I could actually put another switch, another MOSFET. And if you switch on the two MOSFETs at the appropriate times, you create what's called a synchronous uh, DC to DC converter, a synchronous buck regulator, I suppose it is. And uh, that's more efficient than this type with the diode, which is the asynchronous type. So let me just draw that uh, on a separate piece of paper. So it would be like this with two MOSFETs. Instead of having a MOSFET uh, here on the input and a diode to zero volts and then an inductor going to the output, we have the two MOSFETs. Now you've got to remember that these things have their body diodes, of course. So let me draw uh, this one in so it sits across there. So even if I wasn't driving this MOSFET, even if I tied its gate down to its source, I should mark those in, I suppose, source, gate and drain, then the body diode would uh, still enable this buck converter to operate because it would simply act as the passive diode, the freewheeling diode, I think it's called, uh, in a standard uh, buck converter circuit. So this would be quite good fun to experiment with because you could either not drive this MOSFET and have a standard uh, asynchronous buck converter, I suppose it is, or start driving this gate and try to create a synchronous buck converter. Now the body diode across a MOSFET is not a particularly impressive diode so it actually wouldn't be a bad idea to add another diode which would be a Schottky diode in parallel with the body diode so that you get all the advantages of the low uh, forward voltage drop of the Schottky diode. And it was when I drew this, it was when I put the Schottky diode across the body diode of the MOSFET that I thought, where have I seen this before? I'm sure I've seen Schottky diode put across a MOSFET. And it was here. It's actually in the uh, LTC3780, this thing, the uh, high efficiency synchronous four switch buck boost controller, that I saw the Schottky diode placed across. There's the Schottky diode there, and it's placed across uh, drain and source on this N-channel MOSFET. And it's used here really for the same uh, reason. So when these MOSFETs are just acting as freewheeling diodes, rather than have the rather poor quality body diode with its 0.6 volt forward drop, I will check that, um, you put a shock here across the MOSFET, which gives you that better performance with the lower voltage drop. Uh, so I've just put a MOSFET in my component tester here. It's just an IRFZ. 44N and I just wanted to see what the uh, forward voltage is of the body diode and I think it's this I think it's VF uh, 603 millivolts so that's 0.6 volts it's this body diode showing there between drain and source um, so yes that's a 0.6 uh, volt drop silicon diode which is the uh, the parasitic body diode. It's a, it's, a, it's a diode that's in there not for any reason, it's just the way it's constructed, and you can't get rid of it, it's just there, but it's not a particularly uh, impressive diode, so a shock key across the drain and source terminals would improve that. And uh, as I looked more and more at this circuit, I thought this is a really intriguing circuit. It's 
really incredibly symmetrical. What you've got on the input side is almost identical to what you've got on the output side. So I started sketching a simplified version of this. And uh, what you end up with is this. It's a completely symmetrical sort of H bridge of MOSFETs. Uh, output is no longer there. It moves to there. Now, how can we turn this back into the buck converter that I had? Well, you could turn this MOSFET on permanently, either by putting a gate source voltage across uh, the gate in the source, or you could just simply put a switch on here, like a physical toggle switch, and simply uh, switch it out of circuit so that the output still remains at the, uh, the far end of the inductor. Uh, this MOSFET would be off, of course, because in the uh, original buck circuit, there's nothing uh, beyond the inductor there. So that one would be off, that one would be on. This one you could switch on and off uh, with pulse width modulation. This one you could either not use if you want asynchronous operation or uh, work out a signal that could be uh, put into this gate if you want synchronous operation. So let me draw in the remaining uh, body diode. So this one's got a body diode um, like so. Then I thought, well, why not have shock key diodes on these two MOSFETs as well? Let's make it totally symmetrical. Let's have body diodes, shock key diodes everywhere. And so that's the complete circuit. It's four MOSFETs, one inductor sitting in the middle here. And it can still be used as Muppet. It can still be used as the simple buck converter with a solar panel on the input and a, a lead acid battery on the output, but it can do so much more because you've got these four MOSFETs. We've actually got the equivalent circuit of the LTC uh, 3780, as long as we drive these four gate signals in the correct sequence. And it is quite complicated. I'll print out the uh, pulse diagram for this chip in a moment. But this is not only a buck converter, this is also a boost converter, or it's a buck boost converter. It's just so much more flexible. So you could have um, a solar panel on the input, which was a higher voltage than the battery. That's how I had the original Muppet, 18 volts coming out of the solar panel, going into this circuit and a 12 volt battery. So this DC to DC converter was doing a step down. But what's to stop you having a lower voltage solar panel and using this in boost mode and doing a step up? But actually there's something here and it's staring me in the face. It's so obvious. And that is that that doesn't have to be the input and that doesn't have to be the output. You could actually flip it around. It's completely symmetrical. As long as you've got your pulse signals correct on all of these four MOSFETs, you can actually transfer energy from this right-hand side back to the left-hand side. And that's something I've been thinking about ever since I had the uh, two supercapacitor banks where I had uh, one on the input of this LTC 3780 and one on the output. Actually, no, I didn't use this, did I? I used the um, Rui Deng unit, but uh, it was a buck boost. And uh, I transferred energy from the left-hand side to the right-hand side capacitor. And as the voltage on the input went down, the voltage on the output went up. So it had to go through the buck boost uh, switchover point. And I was thinking when I was doing that, or shortly afterwards, wouldn't it be fun if I could then actually transfer the energy back the other way? Well, with a completely symmetrical general purpose, bi-directional buck boost DC to DC converter, synchronous if you want it, that could be done. Right, I've just added in a couple of capacitors because you want to be able to hold these voltages uh, reasonably still so that you can measure them, so that you can create voltage feedback loops uh, for creating, say you want a, a fixed voltage, a regulated voltage on the output, if this is the output, it doesn't have to be, this could be the output and this could be the input. So you might want uh, voltage control loops of both voltage on the left hand side, voltage on the right hand side, current on the left hand side, current on the right hand side, control loops for all those things. And this would be so versatile, you could have solar panel on one side going to a battery and it could be a lead acid or a lithium. You could have a solar panel going to a supercapacitor. You could have a supercapacitor transferring energy to another supercapacitor or a supercapacitor to a battery or a battery to a supercapacitor, left to right or right to left. It's completely flexible and versatile. 
So I think that's where the Muppet needs to go. This simple buck converter would be replaced by this general purpose, completely symmetrical, bi-directional DC to DC converter. Uh, this board would still have the current sensors. This is the ACS712, uh, is it? Or it could have an INA219, which I've been playing around recently. Or it could have uh, current sensing on the low side with just a low value resistor and an op amp to boost uh, that voltage across that low value resistor up. Uh, voltage sensors, of course, it would need as well as current sensors. These capacitors, um, these all 100 volt capacitors, because I wanted to have uh, high voltage both on the input side and the output side. Um, I think this capacitor is just really a duplicate of this capacitor because they're both on essentially the same piece of wire. So I'm not quite sure why I did that. So I think what I might do is I might put the uh, inductor right in the center, the H uh, arrangement of MOSFETs just either side of it, keep all the current and voltage sensors and the capacitors, move the controller, the Arduino, down onto another board uh, down below here. Um, then of course it's what controller to use. What controller, should I stick with Arduino or is there something uh, that would be a better controller for generating the signals for driving the four MOSFETs in this uh, bridge arrangement? You can see from the data sheet for the LTC 3780 that these signals can be quite uh, complex. You've got buck mode where you're driving two of the MOSFETs and the other two are one is forced uh, to ground and one is forced high. That was um, similar to the situation I was mentioning earlier where I was saying uh, to turn this back into the original buck converter. If you wanted it synchronous we'd drive this top MOSFET and the bottom one. This one would just be off and this one would just be on so that is where this waveform comes from once you get into buck boost uh, the ltc3780 is actually driving all four mosfets in this arrangement uh, buck boost where the voltages are flipped the other way around is similar but uh, all four mosfets driven again and then in boost mode again you've got one mosfet pulled high uh, one pulled low and the other two are being driven so is the Arduino going to be able to uh, create all of those signals at a high enough speed? And I'm sort of thinking that uh, we're going to have to be up in the tens of kilohertz uh, region. Can it be done with PWM uh, timers in the Arduino or is it just not going to be uh, sort of uh, flexible enough to create all of the necessary signals? Don't know at this stage. Um, so I think I'll call this redesign of the Muppet Muppet 2 because it's quite a good name even though it won't be exclusively for uh, solar panel on one side and battery on the other with maximum power point tracking as the main control focus. It will be a general purpose, as I say, bi-directional DC to DC converter to shovel energy from one thing, whatever it might be, battery, supercapacitor, solar panel, to uh, another thing. So that's Muppet 2, which will be a universal, uh, bi-directional DC to DC converter, buck boost, uh, asynchronous, synchronous, uh, solar, battery, supercapacitor, so versatile. Coming soon. Cheerio.